to the Church of God and Saints in Christ, to our Chief Executive Officer, Bishop Robert Dennis Grant Sr., and to our grandma, Grandfather Abraham, Grandmother Sarah, to the Daughters Forum, to, to all the pulpit dignitaries, to the deacons, to the U.S. Authority and Angel's Daughters, to the Sister Elders, to all of the Daughters of Jerusalem, the Sisters of Mercy, and Sons of God's Prophet. I'm thankful to be here. I'm thankful for life, health, and strength. I'm thankful for food, rain, and shelter. I'm thankful for a mind to strive to do his will. Um, you don't mind me just an opportunity to shake off my nerves a little bit. Yeah. Um, this is a little bit of an overwhelming and intimidating position to be in. Um, but I thank God for the opportunity to even address the church um, in this capacity. I just thank God for, for just sparing my life um, with all that's going on in the world. And you just never know from day to day but the seen and the unseen danger. I'm thankful to God for just carrying me through from day to day as I I go back and forth to work as I go back and forth from church. I'm, I'm thankful that God keeps his, his arms of protection around me and around my family. Uh, and I have to thank God for my family on today. Um, for my church family, but especially for my carnal family. Um, just want them to know how much I love and appreciate them. Um, I'm thankful for those who were able to be here to support me and yeah. you know, give me their smiling faces and encouragement. Um, I thank God for the Church of God and Saints of Christ. I thank God for the sending of Prophet Williams on this Friday. I thank God for the daughters of Jerusalem, for the sisters of mercy, for the sons of God's prophet. I'm thankful for all the examples that I've had um, before me growing up. I'm thankful for um, what different daughters especially have, have meant to me along my journey. Um, and I, I hate to single anyone out, but I do have to thank God for our grandmother, Sarah, um, who's been a great inspiration and support for me. I'm thankful for, just for her having my back, you know. Sometimes that's all, that's all a person needs, is to feel like they're supported and that they're cared for and that they're loved. Um, so without any further ado, if you will turn with me to the fifth chapter of Romans. Yeah. Beginning at the fifth verse. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope may be not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, 
In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet for adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For a brief subject and word of encouragement, I was worth the blood. I was worth the blood. You were worth the blood. What is your worth based upon? How do you calculate your value? Why does it seem like we base our value off things that depreciate over time? Mm. Off things that get old, off things that we can lose, off things that can be taken away, off of the opinions and validation of people whose feelings can change with the wind. Yeah. These are questions that I've had to ask even myself, even recently. And I know I've alluded to some of the struggles that I've had um, before, and I'm still trying to, to overcome some of those things with the help of God. Yeah. 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 But I'm not a preacher. That's, you know, my dad. So I can only encourage you through my testimony. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know where God has brought me from. Yeah. I know and I believe in what God can do. Yeah, yeah. If he can do it for me, oh, yeah. he oh, can yeah. do it for you. Oh, yeah. 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 And so today with the encouragement that God gave to me when I was going through, I just want to let somebody know that you are worth it. Amen. Nothing clever, nothing fancy. Just know that you are worth it. Amen. No matter what anyone says, no matter what anyone does, Despite anyone's opinion about your life, in spite of where you come from, yeah. in spite of where you've been, yeah. you are worth, worth it. Amen. Believe it or not, how we feel about ourselves, and I mean how we truly feel, not the front that we sometimes try to put on for other people. I mean how we honestly, deep down, feel about ourselves influences our perspective, our perception and our behavior. Amen. Yeah. How we feel about ourselves also affects our spiritual life. Yeah. Amen. The world will base your worth off your appearance yeah. or your possessions mm -hmm. or your accomplishments. Yeah. But what happens when you get older? and your appearance starts to change. Mm -hmm. Your hair starts to get gray. Yeah. You gain a little weight, you yeah. lose a little hair. <laughs> what happens yeah. if you lose your position and status? Yeah. What happens when you find that the total value of your liabilities exceeds the total value of your assets, ultimately leaving you with a negative oh, man. net worth? Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. What happens okay. if we allow these things to determine who we are and the life we can have? Wow. Eventually, we'll start to believe the lies and the, deceit, and the deceit of the adversary through the dictates of society that we aren't good enough, we're not pretty enough, we're not skinny enough, we're not yeah. educated enough, we don't have enough social media presence to think we're valuable or worth anything. If we don't know, already know who we are and don't already know our, our value, we'll get sucked into that trap. Yeah. We'll find ourselves chasing after things that will one day pass away. 
Amen. Jesus tells us in St. Matthew 6, 33, one of Grandmother Sarah's favorite scriptures, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Yeah. And maybe you say, you'll say, well, well, Dom, I, lo I love myself. I feel good about myself. Yeah. I don't care what people think about me. I know who I am. Yeah. But you know, no matter how much you try to disguise it or mask it or put makeup over it or dress it up, mm -hmm. how you really feel about yourself comes out in one way or another. Yes. Yeah. Low self-worth manifests in toxic choices, toxic relation relationship choices, okay. excuse me. It comes out in reckless decisions. Yeah. It comes out in unhappiness and discontent. It comes out in our ability, in our inability to reach our full potential. It manifests in stagnation and lack of growth. The adversary knows that if we accept and believe the lies and negative things he whispers to our spirit, we'll never be anything more than what we are. We'll never have anything more than what we have. And ultimately, we'll never inherit eternal salvation. Yeah. As we'll start to compromise what we know is right to be accepted and to feel wanted and to feel loved. But I come to tell you today, there's love that you don't have to do anything for. Yeah. Young people, young ladies, young men, there's a love that you don't have to do yeah. Yeah. anything for. Yeah. You don't have to be popular. Yeah. You don't have to conform. Yeah. We didn't earn it, we don't deserve it, yet God gives to us freely. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. St. John 15, 9, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue to be in my love. Yeah. Jeremiah 31, verse 3, the Lord hath appeared of all unto me, saying, Yet I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Yeah. First John. Four, verses 9 and 10. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. St. John 15, 13, greater love hath no man in this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Wow. I was worth the blood. Yeah. Don't yeah. let anyone diminish your value and your worth yeah. because they can't see it. Wow. Or it no longer suits their personal needs. Yeah. So sometimes people yeah. won't yeah. see your worth if what you have to offer somehow benefits them. Yeah. Yeah. Their feelings and their wants yeah. and their needs may change, but your value does not. And let me tell you one thing, once somebody stops seeing your worth, they stop being worthy of you. Well, all right, man. Once somebody stops seeing your worth, they stop being worthy of you. You don't have to settle. Amen. Being unaware of our worth or being unaware of how we are measuring our worth has spiritual consequences as well. And that's why we see so many lost, so many without hope and direction, not just out in the world, but in the church as well. Yeah. There's so many that are unaware of the value and importance of their soul. Amen. God said, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinned, it shall die. Your soul is going to live forever somewhere. Amen. This flesh is going to die, but your soul is going to live somewhere. And I think sometimes there's this misconception that our works will somehow make us worthy of the gift God gave us in his son, Jesus Christ. But I believe it was Paul in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. He said, for by grace are you saved right. through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, 
not of works, not of works. lest any man should boast. Amen. There's nothing so great that we have done or could ever do. There's nothing we can say. There's not a song we can sing. There's not a testimony yeah. we can give. There's no right. amount of money that we could have that could repay the debt yeah. that we owe. Amen. Amen. Well, what makes us valuable? What makes us worth it? First, we have to know who we are. Amen. We have to know who we are in God. And we have to believe that no matter what things look like sometimes, God didn't make any mistake on you. Amen. It tells us in the first chapter of Genesis, and God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man, he created us, in his own image, yes, in the image of God, created he him. Male and female, created he them. David tells us in Psalms 139 and 14, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. First Peter 2 and 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I can walk with my head held high. Not because I boast in myself, yeah. but because I'm a child of the king. That's right. There's a strength and a confidence and a fearlessness that comes from knowing who you are yeah. in God. Right. Yeah. 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 When you know who you are, yeah. your walk is different. Yeah. That's right. yeah. When you know who you are, yeah. your yeah. talk is different. Yeah. Right. You, you start to attract positive things. You yeah. start to attract positive people in your life. Yeah. You stop accepting things you know you don't deserve. You stop accepting this treatment. Yeah. When you know who you are, you don't settle for an abusive relationship for the, for the sake of feeling love. Uh, and maybe he doesn't put his hands on you. Maybe she doesn't put your, her hands on you. Oh but verbal and emotional abuse are just as devastating, oh traumatic, and damaging as physical abuse. Yeah. If they don't respect you, it's abuse. Yeah. If they talk down to you and degrade you and humiliate you, it's abuse. Yeah. If they threaten you, even without acting on it, it's abuse. Yeah. If they don't respect you, it's abuse. Yeah. If they're controlling and isolating you, it's abuse. Yeah. Gaslighting, manipulation, blame shifting, Abuse. Yeah. Know your worth and stop settling. Yeah. When someone loves you, they respect you. Yeah. When they respect you, they're not going to hurt you. Yeah. Not physically, not mentally, not emotionally, and certainly not spiritually. Yeah. When somebody loves you, they listen to you because they value your opinion and your feelings. When somebody loves you, they make you feel secure. They encourage you. They support you. When somebody loves you, they're aware of your beauty on the inside. Just as much as how you look on the outside. They're going to have that love that music soul child saying about. They're going to love you when your hair turns gray. They're going to love you even if you gain a little weight. The way they feel stays the same because all they want is your love. They know what you have to offer okay. on the inside. Yes. When you know who you are, you don't just command respect, mm -hmm. but you respect yourself first. Well, you respect your spiritual being, okay. and you respect your temple, okay. in which your spiritual being is housed while we're here on earth. Okay. I consider social media, if I may for a moment, I kind of hate to bring up social media because I really want to have mixed feelings about it. Yeah. Right. And, and I'm talking about social media in general because I know there's about 80 to 90% of the church who is 
connected to at least one of the platforms. So don't think that I'm coming for anybody. But the things that I see on Facebook sometimes is just it's just disturbing for, for lack of a, a better word. The things people are doing, the things people are wearing or not wearing, the things people say. There's just no other way to put it than it's just it's disturbing. And I know some things are staged, including our regular everyday posts. Because I know, you know, sometimes we like to make our lives appear to be more than what they really are for other people. But I won't go there. Some things are staged, but the boldness and the confidence that people seem to have to present themselves to the world the way they do is just baffling. And people are quick to say, oh, this is just me. I'm comfortable with myself. You can love her or leave it. But I really do question how they really feel about themselves and how they really expect other people to feel about them. Just think about it. You can't expect to, to go to a job interview with your pants around your ankles and a marathon plant on your t-shirt and expect to get a job. Amen. Just like you can't Amen. walk around half naked and expect to find a respectable partner. You can't tell me that you can't be fashionable with modesty and discretion. You have to know who you are. Daughters of Jerusalem, sisters of mercy, and sons of God's prophet. That's who we are. Carry yourself and present yourself like you're God's kid. Know your worth. When I know I'm worth roses, I'm not going to let you bring me daisies. When I know my skill set in education, I'm worth $40 to $50 an hour. I'm not going to accept a minimum wage offer. And I understand the times that we're living in and the economy, and sometimes people just have to take what they can get. But my point is, when you know who you are in God, you know what you deserve. Yeah. You know that God wants you to be the best and to have the best. Yeah. And all the good that life can offer. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards yeah. you, yeah. saith the Lord. Yeah. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Psalms 37, 4, trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land. And verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, Amen. and cometh down to the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Somebody say, I'm worth it. I'm worth it. Say, I'm worth it. I'm worth it. I'm worth it. When we think of what something is worth, we often think of of what something costs. We think of how much money we have, would have to spend. And even then, its value is still determined by an individual. What you might spend $300 for, I might not be willing to pay because for me, it's not worth it. You might be willing to spend $1,100 on the iPhone 13, but I'm perfectly content with my two $300 Android. Well, but when it comes to your life, when it comes to your soul, there's no <laughs> there's no amount of money that would ever equate to its value. Yeah. There's a blood that purchased your life. Yeah. Acts 20, verse 28, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. 1 Corinthians 7, 22 and 23. For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's freeman. Likewise, also he that is called, being free, is Christ's servant. Ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. Jesus said, I am the living bread, which came down from heaven. If any man eateth this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give. For the lives of the world. First Peter 1, verses 18 and 19. For as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. That is a debt 
that we will never be able to repay. A sacrifice that we aren't worthy of, yet Christ paid the cost. Amen. Several weeks ago, it was a rainy Sabbath morning, and we were in church service, and my mom received, received a phone call from one of her nieces, and she told my mom that her nephew's wife had just been in a terrible car accident, and she was on life support, and they didn't think she was going to make it. That was the rough news to get, especially on the Sabbath. And though we were shaken and sad, we prayed and praised our way through the rest of the day. The doctors wanted to do one last test to confirm that she was indeed brain dead. And she was also an organ donor, so they had to go through their procedures and everything for that. And the next day, she officially passed away. The loss of Jensen's life that day gave so many people the opportunity to live. You see, Jensen didn't wake up that morning and be like, you know, I think I'm going to sacrifice my life today for somebody else. When she left the house that morning, she expected to get to where she was going. When she left the house, she expected that she would return back home to her husband, whom she had just married four months prior to the accident. But when I think about my Savior, he chose the cross. Yeah, right, yeah. He could have called 10,000 angels. That's right. He yeah. could have come down. Yeah. But he chose the cross for me. He chose the cross for you. He didn't necessarily want to die, but he chose to do the will of his Father Amen. for us. He fell on his feet, and on his face, and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Amen. You see, one thing about those people that received Jensen's organs. No matter how grateful they are to her, no matter how indebted they may feel to her, one day, those people are still going to die. Amen. Amen. Receiving her organs may have helped to prolong their life, yeah. but there's only one worthy enough to be the sacrifice for our sins. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's only one whose only blood one. and body and blood can give you eternal life. Yeah, yeah. Because of his blood, there's remission for my sins. Yeah. Right. Because he got up, my soul has the chance to live forever. Amen. St. Matthew 26, 26, 28. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it yeah. and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Yeah. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28. So Christ once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. 1 Peter 2, 24. Who? His own self. Bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Amen. I was worth the blood. Amen. Yeah. We all know the story of Saul, whose name was later changed to Paul. It was a Pharisee who persecuted the church. He beat the saints, he had arrested them, he had them killed. He was determined to harass and oppress and, and, and torture those who followed Christ. Then one day on that Damascus road, he sees Jesus. 
That experience with Christ changed his life. And Christ commissioned him to go and spread the gospel and be a witness unto all men of what he had seen and heard. That first he was like, Lord, they know what I've done. They know who I used to be. They know that I beat them and I put them in prison. They know that I stood by in agreement with them. And sometimes it's like that for us today. caught in this life. One another for where we've been and what we've done. The adversary will constantly remind you of why you're unworthy. He'll tell you things that the, the church world is going to say about you. They're going to treat you like this. There's no saving for your soul anyway. You shouldn't even go to church. But just as God had a plan for Paul's life, God has a plan for your life as Amen. well. Amen. Paul said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this thing, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind Amen. and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. We don't give ourselves and each other the grace and the love and the forgiveness to forget. All right, all right, all right. Christ showed compassion toward and had mercy on the sinner. And that doesn't mean that he condoned the sin. Amen. But then here come the scribes and the Pharisees, you know, those self-righteous saints, well, those of us who like to play dress up with our religion, just taking it on and off. The scribes and the Pharisees always had something to say. They always questioned Christ for what he did and what he said. They always murmured and complained. And I'm sure there might be somebody out there right now thinking about that one saint in your tabernacle that always has something to say. That one saint that knows every article of the Constitution by heart, that can quote every word the prophet, the, the prophet wrote in his epistles, that can quote scriptures from every book of the Bible. That one saint that nitpicks about your uniform, that one saint that's always lurking around the corner waiting for you to slip up so they can tell you what you're doing wrong. That one saint that loves to magnify somebody else's downfall so no one pays attention to the fact that they're just a slip away from a fall themselves. And we wonder why so many are lost, so many in despair, so much hatred and turmoil and destruction in the world. And yes, we are living in the last and evil day, but what are we doing about it by being focused on the wrong things? I will never speak against what we do, what the prophet left, or our rules and regulations that govern the church, but everything has its place. And Christ constantly was trying to get the people to see the bigger picture. He didn't do away with the law. He said, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. All right. But he wanted us to understand what it was really about. One of the Pharisees tempted Christ on an occasion asking him, well, which commandment was the greatest? Which one is most important? Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments came all the law and the prophets. Love. Far above. We can't think we're going to help anyone we condemn or shun or isolate or talk about and then use our rules and regulations and traditions and customs to justify it. If what you believe causes you to be angry with or mistreat me or shun me, first of all, I'm going to question if what you believe is the truth. But if what you believe causes you to hate me or 
to be upset with me, it's no longer about my soul or about what's right. It becomes about your ego. And our ego has no place in our ministry. There are souls out there that we're responsible for who don't know a better way, who who are just doing the best they can with what they have and with what they were given. People who are doing all they know how to do to survive. When people are broken and in pain and in despair and hopeless, the last thing they want to do is go somewhere they might be condemned or ridiculed or scolded or outcast or shamed. We expect broken people to show up looking like they're whole to make us feel more comfortable. But the reality is those who need us the most, first of all, they aren't just going to show up on our church steps. You know why? They already do. Because they're that drunk that can't leave the bar. They're that prostitute that can't find her way off the street. They're that convict that's locked in prison. They're that homosexual that we're supposed to shun and outcast and condemn. They're that juvenile that doesn't know any other way to express his pain and frustration and his trauma than to get in trouble. They're that young man and young lady that feels like the only place they can find love and acceptance and purpose is on the streets. How can the light reach the dark places if those who carry the light never show up? Amen. Neither do my the men light like candles and put them under a bushel, but on the candlesticks, candlestick, and give light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Somebody needs to know that the blood is better than alcohol. Somebody needs to know that the blood is better than drugs. Somebody needs to know that the blood is better than the streets. Somebody needs to know the blood is better than promiscuity. The blood is better than a fast life and cars and money and fame and status. There's a better way than your depression and anxiety. There's a better way than anger and hurt hatred. There's a better way than frustration and turmoil. There's a better way than the struggle. But we have to be able to look past what people do. Yes. Yes. Look past their sin. I'm not saying condone anything that is wrong. But we have to be able to look past it long enough to address the spiritual need. There's a spiritual lack. There's a spiritual disconnect that only Christ can repair. Amen. I don't have to worry about what someone looks like when they walk in. I don't have to worry about what someone's life looks like when they walk through those doors because I know what's offered here. I know who's offered here. And I know and I believe and I have faith that once the blood of Christ gets on the inside, they're not going to leave the same person that came in. Man looks on the outward appearance. We focus on what we see. And a lot of times we pass judgment on the next man because we spend so much time ourselves making sure we look like we have religion and we end up never having relationship. Yeah. It's hard for you to identify or recognize the spiritual need if you yourself don't carry and are not walking in the spirit. Yeah. The 16th chapter of 1 Samuel says, The Lord seeth, not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. The Lord sees me for who I can be. The Lord sees me for who he knows I can be in him. He sees the plan that God has for my life. Jesus said to one of the Pharisees one time, they that are whole have no need of a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He came to save me, just like he came to save you. My sin might be different from yours, but you sin too. We think we have the authority to decide which sins are forgiven and which aren't. Which sins are greater than the other. Sin is sin. And the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But in Christ's love and compassion, he just says, come unto me. 
Come as you are. Come unto me. He's not going to be like, you know, St. Dominique, you know, your, your, your skirt is just a bit too short. St. Dominique, baby, your hair is not up. St. Dominique, your blue blouse is a bit too green. No, he's just going to say, come unto me. Come just as you are. Just come. Put your bags down right here, and you just come. Put down the burdens and come. Put down the, the depression and anxiety. I'll take care of that. Put down that bottle. Put down that needle. I'll take care of it. Put down that situation that you've been worrying about. I know it's heavy. I'll carry that for you. Put down your sorrow. I know it's heavy. Just let me take care of all of that. You just come unto me. And you might say, well, Lord, you know, my shoes are dirty. I got, I have holes in my, my, my clothes. My hair is all over my head. You know, I, I just came from the club and I was drinking. I smell like cigarettes. I have this anger and this hatred in my heart toward my brother. Lord, I'm a mess. I'm just, I'm just not presentable right now. And Jesus is saying, don't worry about that. Just put that down right here. You don't have to worry about what you're going to eat because I'll feed you. You don't have to worry if you're thirsty. I have something for you to drink and you'll never thirst again. Don't worry about the dirt in your life because I'll clean you up. Don't worry about what you're going to wear because I'll clothe you. Don't worry about where you're going to sleep because I have plenty of room. I have a place prepared just for you. Amen. Just come unto me. You're worth it. Once the blood of Christ gets on the inside, you know that same person, that same broken person that was looking all jacked up and looked like what they were going through, one Sabbath, they're going to walk in and they're going to have a smile on their face. They're going to have a glow on their skin. Yes, yes. Their skirt's going to be the right length. Their blouse is going to be the right color. Their hair is going to be on, on top of their head. Their attitude is going to be better. They're going to come to church on time on the Sabbath. They're going to pay their tithes and offering. They're going to be obedient to their pastor. See what, see what I'm saying? Christ works on us from the inside out. David said, create in me a clean heart, oh God. Every new and right spirit is in me. The cleansing has to begin on the inside. And the only thing that can clean your life is the blood of Christ. He gave us that chance and opportunity because we are worth it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's love. Because of the blood, my debt is paid. Because of the blood, yeah. I'm forgiven. Yeah. Because of the blood, I have opportunity for eternal life. Yeah. Because of the blood, I'm justified. Yeah. Because of the blood, I'm saved. Because of the blood, I'm healed. Yeah. Because of the blood, I'm cleansed. Yeah. Because of the blood, Satan has yeah. no dominion yeah. over my life. Yeah. Because of the blood, I'm redeemed. Yeah. Because of the blood, I'm free. Yeah. I was worth yeah. the time of thorns that they broke down. Of the glory of his grace, wherein 
he had made us accepted in his beloved. In whom we have redemption yes. through his blood, the forgiveness of sins yes. according to the riches of his grace. First yes. John 2, verse 2, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world. Romans 5, 18, 19, therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, yes. many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one, shall, one be, shall many be made righteous. Right. Revelation 5, 9, and they saw a new song, yes. saying, Thou art worthy to take the word and to open the seals thereof. Yes. Thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. Yes. church say amen i was worth the blood what a powerful message from sister mary out of heightsville maryland saint dominique wade i'm worth the blood yes yeah, satan has a way of making us feel like we don't deserve the things that god has given us satan has a way of making us feel worthless and useless and that we can't be utilized and be meat for the master's use but I thank God that I was worth the blood. Yeah, through depression, I was worth the blood. Through my anxiety, I was worth the blood. Through the trials and tribulation, I was worth the blood. I say hallelujah to the Lamb of God because I was worth the blood. The scripture says there are three that bear record in heaven, the Spirit, the Father, the, 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 the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear record on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. Oh yes, I was worth the blood. I say hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, because I was worth the blood. And any of you who feel that you're not worth it, just know that God has a purpose and a plan for your life. God has brought you into this mighty, great church to redeem you. We thank God for his son and sending his son, Jesus Christ, who has reconciled us back to God by the shedding of his blood. Oh yeah, I was worth the blood. So today, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice that would like to be a part of this church, if you're looking for healing, if you're looking for restoration, if you're looking for wholeness, if you're looking for deliverance, if you're looking to be one with the Lord, just type in the chat, I'm worth the blood. You, after the choir sings a suitable song, the, 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 the word, the, they'll be prompted some codes for you to, to, to be able to see the message on the screen, I'm sorry. And um, just follow those words on the screen, follow the message on the screen and say I was worth the blood after a song by the, by the virtual choir. Oh.
Amen. Truly, we're grateful once again for a soul-stirring, all-inspiring message from Sister Mary St. Dominique Wade out of Heightsville, Maryland. I was worth the blood. We pray that for those who may have wanted to be a part of the church or may have wanted to join God's heavenly army, we pray that you'll get another opportunity to, if the Lord permits, to be a part of this great church. And just remember, no matter what you're going through, no matter the situation, when Satan tries to attack you with those fiery darts, when he tries to give you those, makes you feel that you're just not worth it, just remember that you're worth the blood. If Israel be not gathered together, Jacob shall in no wise lose his reward.